This sweet potato cornbread recipe is going to be amazing. It's something that I've wanted to do for a while because both sweet potatoes and cornbread are southern staples. Uh, about a month or two ago, I did a sweet potato fritter recipe video. Be sure you check that out. And it really got the creative gears turning in my head, shall we say. I've heard of sweet potato cornbread in the past. I did some research on the recipe and now I'm going to give it a try. In this bowl, I have one cup, or as I measure it, 160 grams of stone ground cornmeal. I'm sure you could use regular if you want, but stone ground has a lot more flavor and a lot more texture. It's like comparing whole wheat flour to white flour or old fashioned rolled oats to quick cooking oats. There's just so much more flavor and texture. Most sweet potato cornbread recipes call for about a cup of mashed sweet potatoes. I am using 240 grams of grated sweet potatoes. I measured it out and if you pack the shreds very tightly into a one cup measuring cup, it's two cups. They grated very easily. It really wasn't too big of a problem, but I'm sure you could put them, you could put the sweet potato into a food processor if you want as well. Also, I did not skin the sweet potato. I grated it with the peel on because in my opinion, as the Argentines would say, it's just a lot of quilombo, a lot of hassle to peel vegetables. So I avoid peeling things as much as possible. I'm going to use half a cup or 75 grams of all-purpose flour and of course the sweet potatoes. Most sweet potato cornbread recipes call for mashed sweet potatoes but I decided to do something different just like with my fritters. As you know I am a southern chef and an Argentine chef and in Argentina a lot of people really like to grate vegetables on cheese graters. That's what I did for my squash and zucchini casserole and I really like doing that. I decided to do that for this cornbread and I think that grating the sweet potato on a cheese grater and then putting it into the cornbread instead of mashed sweet potato, when you cut the cornbread you will be able to see the bits and pieces of the sweet potato in there and I think aesthetically it's going to be really nice. So we're going to give that a try. I am going to use one and a quarter cups of buttermilk, 320 grams. If you don't have buttermilk, then I would just take milk and add one tablespoon of vinegar. And I'm sure if you want to make vegan sweet potato cornbread, you could use almond milk. Also going to add a quarter cup of water if necessary, if the batter is kind of dry. One quarter cup, or as I measure, 60 grams of non-fat Greek yogurt, extra moisture, extra tang. I am going to also add half a teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of baking powder. When I was researching the recipe, a lot of sweet potato cornbread recipes call for a tablespoon or three teaspoons of baking powder which to me seems like a lot but I think that the train of thought is that the mashed sweet potatoes are really heavy so you're gonna need more baking powder. I think that I'm gonna be okay with two especially since I grated mine. We'll see. I'm going back and forth about the tablespoon of sugar. Usually to my cornbread I do two tablespoons which I know in and of itself is kind of controversial. I'm I'm still deciding. We'll see if I add that or not. One large egg, two tablespoons of butter that I'm going to melt and add to the batter and over here I have my cast iron skillet with uh, an eighth of a cup or as I measure 25 grams of, I'm using lard. 
You could use vegetable oil or shortening, but I am using pork lard. And in fact, I render my own lard. I get pork fat from the butcher and I go through the process of rendering my own lard. It was one of my first videos here in my YouTube channel showing you how to render lard. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you check that out. I'll try to remember to put a link below. What does it taste like? If you've never had lard, it tastes like baking grease, but without the smokiness, if that makes sense. You could definitely use vegetable oil. I wouldn't use olive oil because I think that the smoke point is too low. I'll get into that in a different video. But um, yeah, if you just want to use vegetable oil, you definitely can or bacon drippings, shortening, what have you. But honestly, lard in a cast iron skillet for some cornbread, there's nothing better, in my opinion. This is gonna be a bit different from what you're probably used to because I am going to take my cast iron skillet and I'm gonna put it into a 400 degree oven for 15 minutes. And I'll bring you back and I'll show you why. My skillet with my lard is now in the oven, so I mix together the dry ingredients. The cornmeal, the flour, salt, two teaspoons of baking powder, the sugar I'm still going to hold off on because I, I still haven't made up my mind. We'll see. But the skillet is almost ready. I've got about four minutes or so left until it's ready. So I'm going to add in my other ingredients. Actually, let's start with the uh, sweet potato. I'm gonna add in my sweet potato, 240 grams or two cups of shredded sweet potato. I would say it's one, uh, just so you have an idea, Something like this, maybe a little bit bigger than that, is probably what you want. I am going to add in my buttermilk. Now I'm doing this now just before, I'm going to go just before everything is ready for a reason. You might be asking Chef Parnell, why did you put the skillet with the lard into the oven. Well, the reason why I did that is because with Southern style cornbread, what you do is you put some sort of grease in your skillet. I'm gonna call it oil, just to simplify the explanation. And you put the skillet with the oil into the oven so that it gets hot. And while it's in the oven, you mix your cornbread batter. And if you're wondering, my butter is in the microwave, I'm gonna melt it in a minute or two. And once you're done mixing the batter, your skillet should be ready. And then you take out your skillet and you pour your cornbread batter into the hot skillet with the grease. It is a pretty cool to look at. It makes a nice sizzle. And the reason why people do that is because that gives your cornbread a nice golden brown crust. It basically fries the bottom and the sides and it just gives it a really nice texture and nice flavor. If you don't have a cast iron skillet or you don't want to go through all that quilombo, shall we say, you could definitely just make this in an 8x8 casserole dish. Just butter it like you're normally making a casserole or something and put it in. It won't have that same crust, but I think it will still be fine. I've never poured oil into a casserole dish and then uh, taken it out and poured the batter in. I'm sure you could, but most people, if they're not using a cast iron skillet for cornbread, then they just grease the sides with butter or something and just pour in the batter and then put it into the oven.
I just melted my two tablespoons of butter in the microwave. I'm going to add that. I actually don't think I'm going to need the extra water. I cut down on the stone ground cornmeal for this recipe and that is kind of dry sometimes. So I think because I'm using less of that, I might not need the extra water. I'm going to keep stirring and as you just saw there was some dry cornmeal. So when you're making this, make sure you stir deep down in there and get the cornmeal that's on the bottom. I just pulled my skill out of the oven. I twirled it around to coat the sides. And now I'm dropping in the batter. You want to work very quickly because if you pull the skillet out of the oven and you wait before you pour in your batter, then the oil will have a chance to cool down and it won't make that sizzle. It's not going to fry the sides. So you want to make sure that your batter is fully mixed and you're ready to go before you pull out the skillet. And listen to that. Before I put my skillet back into the oven, I wanted to show you that around the sides, it looks like you can see the little bit that is crispy even now before I put it back in. I just pulled my sweet potato cornbread out of the oven. It was in at 400 degrees for 25 minutes. Looks delicious. And I know it's done because if I insert a toothpick into the center like this, it comes back clean. And I can't remember if I said this already, but I decided to add the tablespoon of sugar. I have a sweet tooth. Aesthetically speaking, I really liked how this sweet potato cornbread recipe turned out. First of all, I really liked how I could see bits of sweet potato when I looked down on the cornbread. So just by looking at it, it was clear that there was something different about this cornbread. But I think that if I had used mashed sweet potato like most recipes call for, it wouldn't have been quite as obvious. I waited maybe 15 or 20 minutes before I cut in, and when I finally tried my homemade sweet potato cornbread, I was very pleased. I liked it because it tasted like both cornbread and sweet potato at the same time. So along with looking different, it definitely tasted different. In my opinion, it tasted just how it should. Using stone ground cornmeal really brought out the corn flavor. So if you've only used what's widely available, I highly suggest that you look for stone ground cornmeal. It will amplify the flavor more than you would ever imagine. I'm also glad that I added the one tablespoon of sugar because together with the natural sweetness of the sweet potato, this was perfect. A little bit sweeter than normal cornbread, but not sweet enough to be a dessert. So unlike some traditional sweet potato casserole recipes and southern fried apples, there was no mistaking this side dish for a dessert. I'm also glad that I added buttermilk to my sweet potato cornbread because it not only helped to balance out the sweetness, making the flavor combination more complex and interesting, but it also helped the baking powder to make the cornbread lighter than it otherwise would be. Speaking of baking powder, I know that earlier in the video, I said that a lot of sweet potato cornbread recipes call for more baking powder than other cornbread recipes do. Although I do admit that maybe another teaspoon or so of baking powder would likely make this even lighter, I honestly thought that it was fine the way that it was. However, I have to admit that part of me was a bit nervous about adding raw sweet potato to the cornbread. Overall, I think it was fine, but every once in a while, I got a bite of some grated sweet potato that I felt like maybe could have used another five minutes in the oven. So that is something that you might want to consider. 
In fact, out of curiosity, I made this recipe a second time, and that time I sauteed the grated sweet potato in some butter and canola oil before adding it to the batter. Although the second cornbread did not have any raw taste whatsoever, unfortunately the sweet potato flavor was not as strong. So I think that the first version was better. Add the grated sweet potato raw. If you do want to cook the cornbread for five more minutes in the oven, that should probably do the trick. This recipe for sweet potato cornbread is easy, delicious, and unique, so it would be the perfect Thanksgiving side dish. If you make this this holiday season, I know you'll love it. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.